How about those who hang and write letters with billions piled in their accounts and shoot themselves or hang themselves as painful as death is that a state can come in a man's life where it seems better to die than to live? Are we still together? How about a young preacher on campus catching the fire, praying for eight hours, praying for nine hours, learning about Greek and Hebrew as a new experience. And my goodness, this gentleman is now beginning to step into some kind of dimension of grace. Now they invite him for small fellowships and the power of God is moving. This young man is rediscovering a whole new world about his destiny. Happy and excited for a while. Then campus days are over. Then he desires to start ministry. Another frustration comes. Where do I get venue? Where do I get money? And then he starts ministry. 30 years later, he's angry, frustrated, looks back, and he does not even know whether he was called or not. What are we really looking for? Please, I want you to listen to this message. The Lord put it in my heart to share. For the terrorists, or one who would stand and kill people and rob a bank and rob people, what are they really looking for? For the preacher who has a large congregation and yet continues to pray and say, God, give me increase, what are we really looking for? For the one who has successful children, all graduates, all successful, all working, and they still have prayer requests. What are they looking for? The one who just made his first billion in dollars and is still looking for something, still submitting proposals from state to state, nation to nation, region to region, fighting and arguing over wars, fighting and arguing over um, contracts. What is he looking for? For the man of God who has been in the faith, working with God for 40 years, and he's still fasting and praying, what is he looking for? For one who has seen the power of God move in his life in uncommon, unimaginable dimensions, what is he looking for? You will thank me for the message that you are hearing tonight. This message will give your life meaning. It will give your life perspective and indeed it will give you peace are we learning the bible says there are four that never say enough it is not within their there is nothing they never attain any state where they can say i have had enough i've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful people and successful systems i didn't want to be a failure myself i hate failure hallelujah and i knew that for you to succeed in life you would need knowledge and indeed a lot of it and so i submitted myself to learning i still do and i'm humbled by the things that i've learned through the years from books from men from materials and even from my own experiences i used to think that the greatest tragedy in life was failure that the worst that can happen to a man in life is that that man fails, fails to achieve his or her dreams. But I would soon discover that there is another tragedy that is greater than failure. And it's not death. This discussion is not about those who are dead. This discussion is about those who are alive. What is worse than failure? I will tell you. There is one thing that is worse than failure. It's called success without fulfillment. That success without fulfillment would bring a greater sting, a greater frustration than even failure. It is possible for a man to be successful and never be fulfilled. In my studies and my learning about God and learning about systems, learning about principles of posterity, principles 
of um, stability in the lives of people and in organizations, I have found out that the subject of fulfillment is one that many people have downplayed to their detriment. There are many, many, many people today who are victims of the absence of fulfillment, even though successful. The greater tragedy, greater than failure, is a life of success that does not have fulfillment. In Genesis chapter 37, when you read from verse 15, the Bible talks about Joseph. I just want to borrow a concept there and then I'll begin my teaching. That Joseph was sent to go and look for his brothers. And the Bible says, And a certain man found him, the him being Joseph now. And behold, the Bible says, He was wandering in the field. Wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? He saw him wandering. Who is this young man? very visionary but you are wandering in frustration it seems to me your body language and your action suggests to me that you are looking for something i see your determination i see your press it seems you're going back and forth you're waking up in the morning i see you're going to have a master's you're going to have a phd i see you're attending conferences and trainings they suggest to me that whilst you are wandering around there is something you are looking for the question is, what seekest thou? What are you looking for? That has made you travel to U.S. for trainings, travel to Canada for trainings, that even in old age, you are not ashamed to go back to school again. What seekest thou? What is that that you are looking for that makes you to hate and detest failure so much Books upon books, you have a library that is full of them. And anything that looks like useful information, you are like a sponge absorbing anything that seems to propose a greater life. Please keep that scripture there. 37, 15. A certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him a simple question. What seekest? As simple as this question is, ladies and gentlemen, you can spend your entire life trying to search for the answer. You would think you have found the answer and 10 years added to your life, you would discover what you found was not really the answer. Many people have gone to their graves unable to answer this question. What are you looking for? What is that which motivates you? Why are you doing the things that you are doing? There are people who retire, respectfully speaking, from service. And they cry and beg and say, retain me again. Even though the company and the organization is saying, you've tried, you've served for 30, 35 years. Go and rest. They say, no, I don't want to rest. What seekest thou? When a patient runs around looking for a doctor, traveling from nation to nation, what seekest thou? Write this down, please. Understanding the subject of fulfillment, understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth. Understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth. Hallelujah. I took out time to learn the subject of fulfillment because I do not want to live a useless life. In as much as you love me, in as much as you believe that I am a man of God, sent from God, in as much as you have been blessed by the privilege of the investment of grace upon my life, do you know it is possible to live a life impacting people whilst you are frustrated? Do you agree with me on that? There have been many people on earth, in the secular and even in church, 
who kill themselves in the presence of overwhelming impact. Traveling from pillar to post, blessing people. While everybody is calling you a blessing, you are dying in total frustration. In fact, I will tell you this. Psychologists will tell you that some of the people who are perceived to be the most successful people are about the most frustrated people. They live lonely lives. They are on drugs. They have to live off therapy after therapy. And you are surprised. You go to their offices and you see awards day and night. And yet those people can wake up one morning and literally die of frustration. It means there is something that if we do not understand, we stand a risk of living a life that is extremely successful. But and in the midst of our success, we find out that we live defeated lives that do not count as far as fulfillment is concerned. For someone shout no way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've met very old people. I like to see elderly people, especially those who have done something notable. I believe they have profound wisdom and I can learn from them. And I will tell you the truth. A number of them, even in old age, in the course of our discussion, have been very open to tell me, Apostle, I did this, I, that, I did that, I traveled here, I traveled there. Some of them preachers, some of them business people. And they would tell me that there was still a longing in their hearts. That they felt like they did not do enough. What is fulfillment? Please write this down. I define... Fulfillment as the satisfaction, please write it, I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively. The fulfillment, the satisfaction and the joy, you may want to add, the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. Fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. It's called fulfillment. Now, I want you to tighten your seatbelt and sit quietly as I teach you something that I truly believe will revolutionize your life. I have taught a bit on it here, um, but then I want to teach this in detail. It was a miracle and it was a deliverance to my own life from living a life that was futile, filled with only success without fulfillment. I want to live a life that is both successful and a life that is fulfilled by every standard. Are you ready? Now, there are six fundamental human needs. Write it down, please. There are six fundamental human cravings. There are more than needs. They are desperate cravings that every man, provided you are alive, it is the craving that defines the motivation that drives everything that you do in your life. Whether from a spiritual context, whether from an economic context, whether from a sociological context, all of us as the human species are driven essentially by these six needs, but believe me, they are more than needs. They are cravings that literally your sense of fulfillment from a human standpoint depends on your having these cravings satisfied that if at any point in your life these cravings are not met and represented in your life it will only spell utter frustration no matter what line of work or career whether you are a preacher an apostle a prophet a businessman an academician a family man young old male female educated uneducated black white it does not matter this 
is a reality that is common to us all. Six fundamental human cravings, human needs. Are you ready? Please write them down. Number one, the need for security. Please write it down. Every human born of a woman has this craving from within them. The need to feel secured, physically secured, emotionally secured. Now, these needs vary based on gender, based on age, based on levels of exposure. But ultimately, all of us have the same need. It is just the various degrees of these needs that now define what we call our personality. Security. Men will give up anything to feel secured, even if they are not secured. Sadly and unfortunately, we've had several things happen across Kaduna. For those of you who are in Nigeria here, the mayhem that was unleashed on people, it's unfortunate. It's been quite a tragic two weeks, especially for that region. And you can imagine. So everyone within that region would crave for security. And the moment you see a military man wearing a uniform, you are happy to see that person. Is that true? Because that person represents security. Number two, the second human craving is the need for variety or dynamism. Please write it down. Variety or dynamism. This is the reason why anything that is new, especially in the mass media cells, because we like to know what is the breaking news, what is the new information. People hate boredom. It's not, it's not given to the human species to endure boredom indefinitely. People like things that create variety. That's why people find special moments and celebrate them. That's why you do not wear the same color of cloth every day, for instance. That is the reason why you, you are tired of a house that you've been living in and you will want to move to another house. It's a craving for variety. Companies based on this awareness reinvent their products, reinvent the packaging of their products, and just by reinventing the packaging of their products can rise to millions of dollars and billions of dollars simply because they satisfy this craving for variety. Same product, they don't have to change anything as far as the product is concerned, but they gave it a presentation that was new and appealing. Are we together? Number three, the third craving that is in every human being is the need for significance. Write it down, please. This is a very serious one, especially to men. Significance. The concept of respect, as we know, the concept of honor, we know, that is embedded in most of the masculine gender, if not all, came from the need for significance. When you bow down and you greet me and say, Good afternoon, sir. Why am I excited as you're bowing down? When you kneel down and say, Good afternoon, ma. It, is, it gives people a perception of significance. Are we together now? People crave for significance. They crave for it more than you can ever know. Preachers, parents, young people, business people, men, women, everyone. Significance. People crave for respect. People crave for honor. And people crave for acknowledgement. You know what acknowledgement is? To make sure you are aware of the extent of the worth of that individual. And that you can attest to the fact that that individual is that valuable. It's called acknowledgement. People can go to any length to be acknowledged. Businessmen, pastors, politicians have become act enemies for decades simply because someone's pedigree was downplayed by not being acknowledged. Or not acknowledged properly. Are we together? If I sit on any of these beautiful seats, or I sit on the ground, or I sit on any white chair anywhere, what difference does it make in terms of 
um, in terms of my physical person, it may not necessarily make any difference, but it seems to communicate a sense of significance, a sense of acknowledgement, a sense of respect, a sense of honor, and you can't believe how people crave for it. In every occasion, there is something called high table. High table. It's still table. High table. Now, what is the difference between those who sit there and those who sit everywhere else? They can even eat the same thing. In every flight, there's what is called first class, there's what is called business class and economy. These are various names that were invented to help manage and communicate the idea of significance. Are we together? You go to certain places and say, this is a priority route, this is a regular route. All these names, VVIP, uh, VIP, you know, and all of these things, they are all, they are all various attempts. Please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Significance. You cannot imagine the degree to which you crave for significance. It's a craving that many people, it would take a lot of enlightenment to even be aware of the extent to which you need it. Number four. Are you ready for the fourth? The fourth craving, desperate craving of all humans is love and acceptance. The need to be accepted. Please underline that word acceptance. The opposite of acceptance is rejection. And go and ask any psychologist and any man of God who is serious with God and they can tell you the, the, the severe consequences of being in a position of rejection. Are we together? Love and acceptance. Please look up. Why do you think most people join occult groups? I can tell you, go and ask most of these young people while in secondary school now, unfortunately, I don't mean called like village, called groups, the one that, you know, these guys that move around and you ask them what, what they are looking for. They will tell you, I came from a family where nobody believed in me, nobody accepted me and here is this group and they told me if they can scar my body and do all kinds of things, I will be accepted and they will endure such pain provided it will provide acceptance hallelujah people crave for love and people crave for acceptance people have cried because doors were shut at them they were not accepted people have cried because they did not give them employment it was not about the employment or lack of it but that it was communicated in a way that shows that you are rejected and they go back feeling things that have no business with that job so is this how my life is going to be hallelujah praise the name of the lord yes there are sincere men and women who come seeking counseling from psychologists, seeking counseling from men and women of God. And they say, look, I think I'm a beautiful lady. I think I'm a handsome man. And look at my life. Nobody has ever said good morning. Nobody has ever said good afternoon. What is making them feel that bad? The sense, a longing for acceptance and the pain of rejection. Is someone learning? Number five. What is the fifth craving? of all human beings growth and increase people crave to grow people crave desperately to grow every parent wants to see their child or their children grow every child wants to grow to become an adult um, parents many of you would see children a young child who started walking and doing all kinds of things and if the mother should leave her dressing space to that child, one day the child is going to surprise her. You will come and you see the child trying to put eyelashes, trying to put all kinds of things. The child is insisting and say, I can't wait for 18 years. It's too long or 15 years or whatever. Let me make my attempt now and the child will paint himself into all kinds of things. The need and the instinct for growth. How about teenagers? 
you flog them and say be patient until you are 18 before you start driving the same car they will be tired and patch it one day but they will fight once they are 17 16 that you will have to flog them advise them make them quote scriptures to stay in one place and wait for just one more year before they start driving the need for growth the need for growth the need for growth especially in africa most people hate being called children when except it's a very old man who says you're a child but anybody who is maybe just a few years older than you if he calls you a child say look you are older than me but don't you dare call me a child i'm not a child because there is something about our passion for growth even children now they don't call me a child what are you i'm not an adult but i'm not a child anyway <laughs> Everybody say growth. When someone holds a master's certificate or a PhD or another certification somewhere, why are they happy to celebrate those milestones? It gives them a perception of growth. Luke 2 and verse 52. Even in fact, when you read from verse 49 to 52, Jesus himself, passionate about growth the bible does not leave us in the dark he went as a teenager the bible says he was at the temple learning building his mind satisfying that need and that craving for growth and the father and the mother joseph and mary went around looking for him when they found him at the temple he said unto them how is it that ye sought for me wish not that i must be about my father's business verse 50 the bible says and they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them 51 and he went down with them and came to nazareth and was subject unto them but his mother kept these things in her heart 52 popular scripture and jesus increased say increased in wisdom he increased in stature physically he increased in favor with god and with men everybody say growth growth is very powerful I do not know anybody, no matter how critical, who does not celebrate any major milestone in his life. People celebrate birthdays. People. Celebrate